Morning show. My name is Greg Knapp, 576 7710. Get you on board, 576 7710. Let's bring in Senator Roy Blunt, Missouri Republican. Senator, how are you this morning? Hey, Greg, I'm good. It's good to be with you, and it's um, only um, like 66 degrees in Springfield, Missouri, instead of 96 degrees, which uh, we've gotten pretty close to a few mornings in the last uh, week. So a little break in the weather, but uh, obviously the political talk is heated up, and nobody's heated up more than uh, the majority leader of the United States Senate, Harry Reid. Yeah, let me let you and everybody else here, I know you've heard this, let everybody else hear the kind of heat you're talking about. The word's out that he hasn't paid any taxes for 10 years. Let him prove that he has paid taxes, because he hasn't. That's a pretty unbelievable charge, and he did it from the Senate floor, so he can't be sued for it. But he's also done it outside the Senate floor, so maybe he could be sued for it. But, I mean, it's just really strange credulity to think that a man of Mitt Romney's means could not pay taxes for 10 years, and the IRS would not notice. Well, he, he clearly says he's paying taxes, and you and I know he's paying taxes. Yeah. And we also know that the Senate's not passed a budget, the Senate's not passed a single appropriations bill, and the economy's in terrible shape. So, you know, President Obama and uh, Harry Reid and everybody at the top of that side wants to talk about anything except what's really happening in the country. Uh, and then you've got the president saying things like they didn't build it and the private sector's doing fine, and we tried my plan. Last week he said, we before. We, we tried our plan, and it worked. Yeah. Where does he think it worked? It didn't work. Uh, and, of course, they want to talk about no, anything. And the more outrageous the charge, I suppose, the more um, you can shift the topic. Well, you know, Senator Blunt, I've been trying to figure other out. other than what voters care about. Yeah, I've been trying to figure out their strategy here because, as you mentioned, it's pretty outrageous. I mean, they must really think the voters – it's it's either that they think the voters are stupid because David Axrod even came out and said – Oh, I never talked about a recovery summer. I mean, two, we got it on tape two years ago. What are you talking about? There's all kinds of articles written about you guys talking about this recovery summer. You got Obama's not backing off what Harry Reid has said. He hasn't asked him to backtrack from that. It makes you wonder if he was involved with it or behind it. But what is, what is their plan? Because to me, when you go this far and this desperate, it's not going to bring new voters into your camp. All I can think of is that they're so desperate now, they got to make sure their base still votes for them. Well, I don't know about that. I think they may be trying to disillusion everybody to where almost no one votes. Uh, they're clearly not going to benefit from a huge turnout, and they're not going to benefit from voters who are thinking about the economy, which uh, is clearly the number one thing that is on people's minds. You don't, you don't have to be out talking to people very long to figure out that uh, private sector job creation, whether they keep their job, whether, they're, whether their brother-in-law gets a job, is what people are thinking about, and they're trying to do everything they can to shift that topic. And the way the president gets reelected uh, is if his team can make Mitt Romney unacceptable as the alternative. True. Uh, and they're doing everything they can to do that. And it's pretty obvious. I mean, just like you know, Harry Reid spending a lot of money uh, in Missouri, in the Missouri Senate uh, primary, attacking at least one of the candidates. Now, this is a playbook he, he perfected uh, in his own state where he did what was necessary necessary to impact uh, the other primary, our primary, the Republican primary, and he's doing that here. He's doing it in Wisconsin. This is no longer, if they can make it uh, anything else, it won't be a, a campaign about the real issues, uh, and so they're just making making things up. Senator Blunt, uh, Nobody you... surely believes Harry Reid's charge, but Harry Reid's willing to make it. Yeah, Senator Blunt here with me on the Casey Moore Show. I think you're right. They're trying to go after Mitt Romney on class warfare. They're also trying to go after him on race. I don't know if you heard the Obama survey get the Democrat woman from Virginia a couple of weeks ago was saying the only people who want to vote for Mitt Romney are people who don't want a black man in the White House. She said it is racism. Point, point blank, she said this is racism, and Obama hasn't distanced himself from her. So it, it, this is not the hope and change and post-partisanship and post-racial America he promised. It's like you said, he's, he's trying to divide us to the point that people just say, forget it, I'm not even going to go to the polls, and I think that's shameful. I think there's a lot of cynicism to their campaign strategy, and uh, it's it's exactly what you're uh, you're talking about. Uh, let's just no matter what uh, how, how how we're proven wrong, 
let's just keep saying the same thing. We can say the economy's better. We can say, you know, they've said that he has uh, actually paid down debt. I mean, who, who believes that? The debt has increased by uh, 50% in three and a half years. Yeah, five it's trillion dollars. Trillion dollars to fifteen trillion dollars, and they say they've, re- they've reduced the debt or cut the level of federal spending. Uh, and and when disproven, they just continue to say it. I think they think that the more money they can put on television saying whatever they want to say, it doesn't matter what the fact checkers say. It doesn't matter what people believe is happening in their life. Uh, they're going to convince them that this election's about something else. This election about jobs, it's about the economy, it's about whether America becomes Europe, or we decide we're going to be the United States of America. Right. Senator Blum with me, Casey Mo Morning Show. Let's get into that economy, because I know that the Republicans in the House have said, all right, let's pass this thing, holding off any new regulations and actually rolling back regulations a couple years if we can. And they have said, let's keep all the Bush tax rates the same. And I know Many of you in the in the Senate on the Republican side would like to do the same thing. Harry Reid won't even let you guys vote on this stuff. And the Senate has put through, we're going to increase taxes on the people making over 200000 as individuals and 250000 as couples. And you guys are trying to do everything you can to stop it, but you're not in the majority. What do you see happening before this election when it comes to taxes and regulations? Will anything change? Oh, I don't see much happening at all. I mean, the, the, the majority leader has pretty much said he doesn't want his members, 23 of whom are, are 23 of those Democrat seats are open. He doesn't want them taking a hard vote. So we're not voting on a budget for the third year in the row, even though the law requires it. We're not voting on a single appropriations bill before the election, which is the only way you can control spending. You've got to, you've got to debate the spending bills to control uh, spending. Uh, and, uh, you know, the tax bill that uh, uh, all but two Democrats voted for uh, a week or so ago would actually go back to the 2000 levels for the death tax, which would impact 24 times as many family farms and 13 times as many small businesses as if you happen to die this year. Mm -hmm. 24 times as many family farms. Missouri has the second highest number of family farms in the nation. We have 100,000 family farms. 24 times as many family farms would pay the inheritance tax, the death tax that Harry Reid put on the floor that Democrats voted for, as would be paying under the rate today. I mean, who thinks that's a fair thing to do in America? Yeah, where you feel like, yeah, well, now you feel like you have to sell part or all of the farm just to pay the taxes, which is obviously not what really anybody wants in America, and it's all part of this class. Well, you know, and I've got, uh, Greg, I've got a good example of that. A guy whose uh, grandfather died 14 years ago. That would have been under the old tax. Uh, A young guy who was 16 at the time inherited his grandfather's farm. Uh, He has been on that farm probably every single day since then, Uh, and he is, this year, they will finally pay off the inheritance tax, Hmm. debt tax, that they had to that they had to assume to keep that family farm that his grandfather had built that he left him intact. Most people don't do that. They just liquidate the family farm because that's the you don't want to face fourteen years of being in partnership with the federal government because they've decided no matter how many taxes your grandfather paid during his lifetime, he was going to pay this one big tax uh, at uh, the end of his life, and you were the one that was going to wind up paying it. Oh, that's so sad. Uh, Senator Blunt with me here, Casey Mo Morning Show. Did you hear this one in, in Ohio? The On July 17th, the Obama for America campaign, his campaign, the Democratic National Committee and the Ohio Democrat Party, they all filed a suit in Ohio. To go after part of the state's law. In Ohio, they allow members of the military to vote three more days of early voting than non-military people. And they say, well, we do this because a lot of these military people have such tight schedules with their service that they have a hard time voting. So we wanted to make it a little easier for them. The, the Democrats are suing to stop that, saying it's arbitrary with no discernible rational basis. So here are the Democrats getting mad that Republicans are trying to make sure there's no voter fraud, claiming that's disenfranchisement. But here they are trying to make it harder for military people to vote. What, what is going on here? 
Well, it's unbelievable. You know, I was Secretary of State of uh, Missouri for uh, eight years, uh, from 1985 till the end of 1992. And one of the things we worked the hardest on was to be sure that people serving in the military had every likelihood that they would be able to cast a ballot, and that ballot would be counted. Uh, there were Democrats after the 2000 election who didn't want the military ballots counted. But Joe Lieberman, the candidate for vice president in that election, stood up and said, uh, I don't want to be part of a campaign that doesn't do everything possible to count military ballots. Uh, well, here you've got clearly, it, it's, it's obvious that the retired military and active duty, duty military, uh, that the majority of them are not going to vote for, for the current commander in chief. Uh, so uh, their side apparently doesn't want want the, any more of them to vote than have to vote, and that's a that's a tragedy. It's an embarrassment. Uh, I'd certainly call on the Obama campaign uh, to uh, disassociate themselves from that, to disavow it, to ask to the Democratic Party uh, in Ohio not to do it, and hope that we'll fight that kind of effort in every state in the country. Senator Blunt, last thing real quickly. We've got three Republicans running in the primary to take on Claire McCaskill, uh, your colleague in the Senate. Do you have a favorite there? Are you endorsing someone or waiting for the primary to be over? You know, I'm not. Uh, I think we've got three great candidates at the they're, they're at the top of our, our list of candidates on our side. I'm looking forward to Wednesday. Uh, I'm going to be for whoever is the winner, and I'm going to be actively out there helping. You know, the, the death tax was an example where Claire voted for that bill. Senator McCaskill did. I voted against that bill. Uh, we do that over and over and over again. Uh, I, I don't see uh, us, my side being the majority in all likelihood. Uh, without the Missouri seat. So part of this election is uh, who's going to be the next majority leader. Is it going to be Harry Reid or is it going to be somebody else? Uh, and I'll be helping uh, the winner of our primary uh, on Wednesday and look forward to, to that happening. Well, we appreciate the time. We'll talk with you again soon. Good to talk to you, Greg. Thanks for what you're doing every day. You got it. Senator Blunt on the KCMO Morning Show. Greg.